Hey there everybody, welcome back to the RC Garage. Today we're going to pick up where we left off with the SCX-10-2 build. Get these rear links set up. And then we'll move on to the shocks. Now for the rear links, you're going to need your 101.5 millimeter link shafts. As well as the 93 millimeter link shafts. And of course, the hardware for it. And you're going to need, and you'll need one of each of the sideways bent link ends, as well as one of the up and down bent link ends. And the ball ends for those as well. Alright, we'll put them together straightforward, just like we did with the front. I like to start with putting the hardware into the link in. Alright now the bent rod ends will go in the shorter 93 millimeter links. Alright I'm going to go ahead and put all these links together and we'll bring you back when we're ready to bolt them to the axle. Alright guys we're back. We've got all the links put together now we're going to put them on the axle housing. Me personally I always start with the bottom links. really doesn't matter which one you start with. You slide it in there. You use an M3 by 15 millimeter screw. In the upper links, you take the one that's bent to the side, and that goes towards the axle housing. And then you use your M3 by 20 by 25 millimeter bolt. Now you don't want to over tighten these because you can strip out that plastic really easy. Plus, these don't need to be really tight. The plastic's not going. The bolt's not going to back out of the plastic. Another little tip: make sure when you install these that the upper links, the other end, is pointing up. So that way, when you mount it to the vehicle, they'll fit right. That's it for the rear axle. The links installed. Now we'll move on to doing the shocks. Alright guys, we're ready to build the shocks. You'll need plastic bag number two. And bag C out of plastic bag number two. There's your shock bodies. Now this 30 weight shock oil, I'm not going to use. So I want to just a little bit heavier oil. So I'm going to be running the 35 weight factory team oil. There's your springs. Your O-rings. And your shafts and valves. Unlike the rest of this stuff where I just throw all the hardware into a, one of these trays. For the shocks, I like to leave everything in the plastic bags just to help keep it cleaner. All right. First thing, you got to build the bodies. Of course, you'll need one of the shock bodies, one of the spring tensioning screws, the bottom cap, and the top cap. And you're also going to need one of these little plastic washers. It's number four on the plastic parts tree that has the spring retainers and the bar, ball ends. Now with these you want to make sure there's no burr sticking up because if there is then it's not going to seal very good and you'll have leaky shocks. Just take your X-Acto knife shave down that burr or a piece of sandpaper if you want. You want that as smooth as possible. Get this started on. Now you're going to need two of the little orange O-rings No ring in. Then you put your little plastic washer and you put your second O ring in. And you take your bottom cap and screw that on. And the next step is to prepare the shock shaft. 
You'll need the shaft, of course. One of the flow valves and two of the little clips. Right. Once you get one of the clips on, put your valve on and do the next clip. And there's one shaft. Now I like to wipe down the shafts because you'll get oils from your fingers and stuff like that on it. And the oils from your hands will really make stuff rust. So I like to make sure it's good and dry before I put it in the shock body. Carefully feed it down through. And there we go. Now you take your rod in. You get it started on there. Once you get a few threads tightened down, pull the shaft on out. And go ahead and tighten this down. There's one shock built. Now for the cap, you do need us one of the black larger O-rings to put down in the cap. Alright. Now I've got my little homemade shock stands for filling them. Holds them nice and vertical for me. And take your shock oil of choice and start filling your shocks. And once you got a decent amount of oil in there, slowly cycle the shock. To make sure you work out all the air bubbles. And once you see no more air bubbles coming up, what I like to do is just sit it in the shock stand and set it off to the side. Don't put the cap on it yet. Just let some of that see if there's any more air bubbles going to work to the surface. And then move on to the next shock. Alright guys, we've got the shocks put together, all filled with oil. Got all the air out of them. Now I'm going to go ahead and top them all off. Then we'll put the shock caps on. Now for this part, you definitely want to have a rag in here by, because you're going to make a little bit of a mess when you start putting these shock caps on. It's going to push some of the oil out. Now once I get the shocks put together, what I like to do is just kind of cycle the shock and see if there's any leaks. Maybe you don't have something tight enough. But it looks like we're doing pretty good here. So we're ready to move on to the next step, which is finishing up this shock build. Now for that, you'll need some ball ends. Now just a quick tip. The shock caps, one side is open more than the other, so make sure you put your ball ends in the right direction. The next step is to put the little fake reservoirs on there and you use this two by six millimeter little screw and it uses a one and a half millimeter one and a half millimeter hex the next thing you'll need is your spring retainers here and of course your coil springs you do have two different spring rates here you got a white and a yellow the white is a 1.13 pound spring and that is for your rear shocks and then you have a yellow which is the front shock and then you have the yellow which is for the front shocks and it is a 2.63 pound spring so make sure you keep track of which shock is which once you put it all together now these shocks do come with some decals for the reservoirs I didn't put them on yet because I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to leave them chrome like that or what. But, and plus they didn't do a very good job at cutting my decals out. This one right here, they cut the bottom off of them. So I don't even know if I'll even use them. But guys, that's going to be it for today. 
Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then let me know by hitting that like button. And if you're new or haven't already, then please subscribe and join me back here every Thursday for more RC fun at the RC Garage. I'll see you guys next time.